Hey yo, it's Bitter Poet Madman and welcome to It's Complicated. Today I'm going to take my Rolex 16610 and put it up against the Omega Seamaster Professional 212.30. The Rolex is 10 years older than the Seamaster, but also about double the cost. Here we go. All right, here we have a 16610 engraved inner bezel, kind of a late model 16610 Submariner from 2008 versus the Omega Seamaster 212.30 from 2017. Um, I wanna talk about both of these watches and I wanna show you some differences and some things that 10 years later, Omega is still not doing that Rolex was doing. But first, let's talk about the things Omega is doing now that Rolex was not doing 10 years ago. So they have the ceramic bezel insert here. Uh, the Rolex has the aluminum bezel insert. The ceramic's much more scratch resistant, although it's much more expensive to replace. I mean, unless you're really beating the shit out of it, I don't think you're gonna have any issue with shattering the ceramic because it would shatter before it scratches. Uh, typically, anyway, it has the anti-reflective coating on the sapphire glass and the Submariner from the same era does not feature the anti-reflective coating. Submariner on the bracelet, on the clasp here of the bracelet, has the stamped, the classic stamped steel and Omega is now doing a laser etching on their clasp. Uh, let's take a look at the looms here. The Rolex is green first versus the Omega has the blue. Um, but if I am correct, I believe both are using uh, Super Luminova. These both watches share the same material. And as you can see in 10 years, the Omega is still gonna glow nice. I do prefer, however, the blue to the Rolex is green. But you know now Rolex is using something called Chromalite. It's you know some kind of their own produced thing, and it's also blue. Um, but we're not talking about that. So those are the things I think that Omega does better on this watch compared to this watch. But let's take a look at what Rolex was doing better than Omega is doing right now, ten years ago. The movements. The Rolex is using an in-house legendary 3135 movement and the Omega is using a modified ETA. I believe it's Omega caliber 2500. Um, movement wise, they keep very similar time. They're both extremely accurate watches as far as timekeeping goes. So that could be something that you're not really concerned with. The steel, let's talk about what the watches are made with. The Rolex is using a 904L steel which is extremely uh, corrosion resistant and rust resistant. It's a little brighter of a color of steel. And the Omegas to this day are still using 316L. Rolex actually founds and uh, manipulates that steel themselves. Uh, they make a lot of watches. I, you know, They have probably fuck you money, so they do it themselves. I think the 904L in person is just nicer. Um, it's, it's also more resistant to corrosion. It's a little harder, a little more harder to scratch. So Rolex wins there 10 years ago. The diver's extension on both of these watches, I talked in the Omega review and you have to really give it a good pull and it comes right out. Once you pull it out, I mean, it is, it's designed so you can't just do it on the fly. And I understand that this part has to go in first. If you do it this way, it's not going to close. It just kind of fights it, so it has to go on the inside, close this down, hold here, and push. Not overly complicated, but it's also not as innovative as the Submariner clasp was 10 years ago. Little button there, push that, and it releases the, oh, I guess it didn't fucking go that time. Wow, all that shit I talked. Here we go. Push the button, and there it comes out. So, I mean, I guess you could, you could call that a wash. Um, never really had that happen before, but I think it's a lot easier to do the Rolexes 
Um, I've done them a few times and I've never really had an issue doing the Submariners. So those are a couple things that Rolex is, was doing 10 years ago better. I really like the Cyclops that you can see, this the magnifier window here. Um, I think it's a great fucking touch to the watch. I'll clean off this crystal a little bit. I think it's a great touch to the watch. Um, you can get them without a date as well, but I love it. Somebody was like, oh, you know, they glue those on. I don't give a fuck what they do and how they get them on there. I think it is a brilliant look to the watch. And of course, when I bought this one, I definitely preferred to get the date over the no date. The last thing I want to, or two more things I want to talk about. Uh, the crown on the Submariner is a bigger crown, so it's easier to grasp. They're both textured very similarly, and the Rolex crown is a little tougher to unwind. Um, and it doesn't feel cheap. It feels like it's supposed to be kind of tough to unwind, so it doesn't get become unwound so you could take in water when you're just fucking around. The Omega, the crown guard here, I like it. It, it does well, but man, that thing unscrews with little to zero effort and screws back in very easily very nice i haven't had an issue with this coming unscrewed or anything but that is something i wanted to mention that i think again the rolex was doing better 10 years ago and omega is still not doing on their standard dive watch also the omega does have the helium escape valve um, if you're really using this as a diving watch and you're going to go that deep which you know who the fuck is going that deep but if you really are and you're going to go into the diver's bell you have to unscrew this both of these are tested to the same water resistance and the rolex doesn't need the helium escape valve so it kind of makes me think that the omega's escape valve is a little gimmicky the deep sea the rolex deep sea the sea dweller they have a helium valve on the side and it does not need to be unscrewed to be functional um, i also have had a hair or two get pulled while wearing this on the wrist kind of gets caught you know in here sometimes the bracelet's been super nice to me but the case pulling hair here never has happened on the submariner in conclusion the rolex submariner is the clear winner between both of those watches however it is double the fucking price okay and i understand if you're in the market for a luxury watch and you don't want to spend double the price to get some of these extra bells and whistles, especially now you're talking well over double the price to buy a new Submariner. You can pick up this specific one's a little collectible because it is a transitional sub. It has the engraving on the inside. Pick it up for probably six and a half, maybe seven if you get box and papers. Um, the Seamaster, you can buy brand new on a gray market for roughly 27 or 2800 bucks so um there is a difference i have seen a lot of people say that an omega is just a rolex without the rolex name on it i'm sorry it's not the rolex is the fucking winner so that's it for this video um, let me know what you thought do you have either one of these watches would you want either one of these watches the sub is one of my all-time favorites and um pro it's probably the favorite watch that i own we'll see you next time on another video